Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started. My name is Giovanni Gonzalez. Thank you all for joining in, a, in the Zoom meeting room and, and start this conversation with us. We're very, very, very um, honored that you're here. We're committed to create value for you in this conversation of making the transition. Again, sometimes the, the painful but rewarding transition of going from being an employee to becoming a business owner to becoming an entrepreneur. This is a uh, a conversation is really close to my heart. It's something I'm very passionate about. I've been very passionate for many years. And, um, and I hope that, uh, and, and not only hope, but I'm fully committed that it makes a profound difference in your life. And so it is for Sorel. Good morning. Hello, Sorel. How are you? Gio, I am doing great, my friend. I want to welcome you to the conversation. And I'm saying welcome like you didn't create this conversation, right? But I want each of us to get present to the fact that uh, while this conversation may contain information that we already know, go ahead and go on mute. Thank you, Eddie. Awesome. So yeah, while this conversation may contain information you've already heard, and already know, uh, this whole conversation isn't about knowing something. Because see, to make the transition from entrepreneur, from employee to entrepreneur, doesn't require knowledge. You can acquire all the knowledge you need after you make the transition, but making that transition, mustering up the courage to do so, and once you've done it to actually grow thrive as a leader, and generate a business that survives you with something else. So it is that conversation that we're inviting you to. So it is really a conversation, not like a course or a workshop where you come to get new knowledge and go apply it, but really a conversation that you come into to create yourself as entrepreneur right here, right now. So my name is Sorel Ketam. I have been an entrepreneur since 1999. I've taken bumps and bruises. I have scars to show. I have some that I hide. But one of my favorite scars is the uh, 2006 to 2009. Uh, I run a company with my wife, Susan, and that company used to do over 3,000 units a month. And when the recession hit, and the market tanked, we went to doing fewer than 300 a month. And what it took to have the stamina to survive through that is inside the conversations we're going to have today. So I want you to know it's really not about knowledge. It's about who you are for yourself and how you create and cause yourself as an entrepreneur on an ongoing basis. So. Uh, I'm delighted to be here with you. Peter, welcome back. Kathy, great to see you. Audrey, welcome. And Giovanni, what do you say we get right to it? Absolutely, Sorel, absolutely. I'm just gonna start by just sharing a little bit about myself and about my journey in the context of making the transition. I moved to the US maybe about 20 years ago. And when, the, when I started really getting a sense of what it takes to make a transition, which on, was really on the first thing I did when I moved to the U.S., I was selling newspapers at traffic lights. They used to pick me up in the morning, drop me uh, a, a traffic light, and then something that happens in the traffic light, it's critical for business. And that is that I was standing there with something, and I needed to give it to those who were in the car. And there were traffic right they had to come to the light and i was there standing and i had maybe one minute or a minute and a half to gain their attention and maybe have the opportunity to give them that, that newspaper and that's what business is about it's about grabbing attention and then creating a sale and that was my first job then i went on to work in construction and i went on to work for the restaurants and i was a bus boy and at some point dishwasher and at some point i learned something that in order to be successful as an entrepreneur, you got to become more valuable to the marketplace. And to become more valuable to the marketplace, there is an essential conversation that needs to happen. And that is how do you help people make money? 
or how do you help people save money or how do you help people become more effective about those things that they care about and i became very passionate about that to make the story short eventually i went to school and i got a master's degree and then i went to work for a consulting company and then i started having my own business in fact i paid my way through school by helping businesses market themselves and then eventually i worked i went to work in africa in south america and the caribbean working on elevating the performance of individuals and organizations to be more effective about their businesses. And so that leads us to the conversation today. I'm going to be sharing the screen, Sorrel, and then um, we can get started with the first slide. Would that be okay? Yes, Sorrel, can you hear me? You're Sorrel, muted. you're muted. Sorry, Sorrel, you're on mute. Uh -oh. <laughs> Raise your hand if Giovanni's uh, audio was crackling for you. So, Gio, you may need to adjust something on your end. Okay, perfect. Can you hear me better now? Much better. Awesome, awesome. Did you hear anything I said? <laughs> we heard everything you said, but it was accompanied by the crackling. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So here we are. This is our opportunity to embark on this journey. And uh, uh, Giovanni and I have learned a whole bunch. And one of the things I've learned, you know, Gio said, newspaper, right? When you're standing at a street corner and you're selling newspapers, no one, there is no one for whom there is a doubt in their mind that you're there to sell something right? I'm selling newspapers for God's sake. Here, do you want one? Now, in an environment like this, where we're selling services and, you know, kind of jumping right into it before I address the challenges to making the transition, there is for myself as a human being, and now I want you to check to see if that's there for you. There is the tendency or the desire for me to quote unquote, be someone who is a soft seller. Meaning I have something to sell you, but I'm not gonna tell you that directly. In the hopes that you won't view me as quote unquote, a salesperson. Because salespeople are, go ahead and say it. Come on, go off mute. Salespeople are? Why me? Whiny, slimy, slimy. slimy. Salespeople are slimy. Give me another one. Salespeople are. Uh oh, Audrey, you're on mute. Annoying. Annoying. You got it. So now, I in inside of that mindset, I make salespeople wrong, and given that I'm un an entrepreneur who, like Giovanni says. I need to sell something so my business will grow. If salespeople are annoying and salespeople are slimy and I need to sell to make my business grow, where am I standing? Tell me, if that's the mindset, how will your business go? Come on, get off mute, say something. It's not going to go anywhere because you're going to stop yourself from doing it. Exactly. It's not going to go anywhere at all. So I'm using this occasion as an example for us. This meeting is an introduction to a course called Access the Leader Within. Access the Leader Within is the newspaper that Giovanni and I are selling today. At the end of this conversation, we are banking that you'll see value for yourself and say, you know what? You are selling access to leader within and I want to buy. And that's what, guess what? As a salesperson, you have to be confident enough that what you're offering has value and you have to be clear that who you are is a salesperson. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. If you're in business, you are first a salesperson. And 
many, many of the challenges that entrepreneurs face in making that transition is literally dealing with the anxiety and the fear of being a salesperson, dealing with the anxiety and the fear of bringing people around you who could be a team that you would connect to a big vision. I love the vision, so do you. I love the idea of being in business, so do you. And somewhere in the back of your mind, you hate selling, yet nothing will ever happen for your business unless you create and cause yourself as an effective salesperson, as an effective marketer, as an effective person who's out there just unabashed about what it is you bring to the party and no one's going to ever make you shut up. Now, that is a big challenge in making your transition. Now, there are other challenges. You may be dealing with how to balance the amount of time that it takes you to run, grow your business, and actually spend time with your family, or even have time to take care of yourself. You may be dealing with this syndrome. If I want it done right, go ahead and finish the sentence for me. If you want it done right, what? You have to do it yourself. Oh, wow. And, and as easily as that came to your tongue, Audrey, I guarantee you, <laughs> you are blind to the fact that you have been stopping yourself because of that. You insist on doing it all by yourself. You insist on not asking for help, because if you do, you might appear weak. <laughs> weak. Don't you, right? <laughs> Isn't that, I mean, that's, can you see the challenge for making that transition when the mindset is that? So if you drop off this call right now, I swear, you have what it takes. Once you have faced these challenges, and actually are with them that they are simply a figment of your imagination. You've got what it takes, not only to make the leap, if you're an employee at this point, but to now do what it takes to sell your business so that as an entrepreneur, you can thrive and your business can grow. So in the rest of this conversation, we're going to dig into these challenges in a way that leaves you equipped with what you need to not only make that transition, but thrive as an entrepreneur. So uh, one of the most painful aspects of the transition is letting go of the fact that you are an expert. Raise your hand if you're an expert at what you do. Yes, you are. Samantha, what's your expertise? I, my expertise is to help people get, build wealth. Exactly. You are a wealth manager and an expert at that. Audrey, what's yours? Uh, customer service and destination knowledge. There you go, right? That's who you are. Now, have you ever heard someone, maybe an engineer, maybe a drafter, maybe a, a telecommunications expert, whoever it is, have you ever heard somebody come to you and go, you know my boss, he relies on me. I get this done. Without me, that place would be nothing. Have you ever heard that? Yep. Have you ever felt that way yourself? And some people, when they get to that point, where they go, I'm the technician, I'm the subject matter expert, I'm the employee who's busting my back so that this organization can make money. You grow resentful and you go, you know what? I can do this on my own. I could do this for myself. I could actually be in business. Now that's the first little germ of wanting to be in business for yourself. And there's a big challenge inside of that. Often, I will take my expertise, my knowing how to cook food, 
isn't equal to my knowing how to run a restaurant. So in making the transition from employee to entrepreneur, there is a little hump you have to cross. And that hump is this. There's a big difference between having a job that somebody else owns and now being the owner of your job. Being the owner of your job isn't the same as running a business. There are many, many other things involved in running a business. The minute you say I'm in business, a whole world opens up and that world contains, have you created a business plan? And if you did create a business plan, how are you going to market your business? How are you going to sell your services or products? How are you going to account for the money you receive? What processes and systems will you put in place to ensure that all of it is done efficiently? How are you going to interact with your customers, customer service? Now, have you ever heard somebody say, I am the cook, the bottle washer, the dishwasher, I wear all the hats. How many of you have heard that? How many of you currently say that about your business? Aha, guess what? You own your job. You're not in business yet. So we're going to take a look at what it takes to transition from owning your job to being in business. Now, what we're going to cover is at a very high level. And Giovanni is going to take us through the first step. Being someone who owns a business requires having a vision, not any type of vision. Giovanni, what kind of vision are we talking about? You're on mute. Yes, thank you, Sorrel. And one thing I wanted to add in that transition that you were pointing to, there's also this aspect of freedom. There's a psychological transition as well. Many of the of the clients that I've had the chance to, and myself, that I've had to, that I had the chance to, to coach and support in that transition, they really want freedom. They're looking for freedom. That's why they like the whole idea of being an entrepreneur. And inside of that freedom the way that they organize their, their day is very um, not organized. Like I start my day sometime at 10 in the morning and then I go to lunch at 12 and then I take a long lunch until 2.30 and then I work for another hour. And then you know what? I need to be with my family. And so in a day of 12 hours, they only work three days. I mean, three hours. And inside of that, very little gets accomplished. But now you're free. You have freedom. So in that transition, it's critical to see your day as your best friend to organize. Okay, I wanted to, I wanted to add that. And Gio, this is perfect to add that, right? It's the syndrome called, I am my own boss. I'm the boss of myself. I will do as I please. Well, here's the rub. When you're in business for yourself, you're not the boss of yourself. What's the boss of yourself is the business plan and the activities on your calendar connected directly to executing that plan. And unless you are, and I'm going to use that word, unless you surrender and commit to being driven by those occasions on your calendar, consider your business dead. It's got a very, li it's got a very little chance, really little chance. And we, don't, we know the numbers, right? 50% of businesses fail the first year, 80% fail in five years, and only about 10 make it in 10 years. And it's not because of the strategy. So we're going to go about that. We're going we're gonna to take a deeper look about that. So when we think of vision, once you start your business, you gotta have a vision, right? And we hear this everywhere, everywhere you go, you gotta have a vision, you gotta understand your why, right? But here's the critical aspect of the vision, as Sorel was pointing to, is you don't wanna just 
own a, your job, now you want to have a business. So to have a business, you want to have a vision. Now, when you see that vision of your business, where do you want it to go? Where do you see it? You know, imagine right now, where do you see your business? In a year or in five years, where do you see it? As you create that vision, now I want you to add something. What teams do you need to create to have that vision be fulfilled? Not what do you need to do? What teams do you need to create to have that vision be fulfilled? You see the difference between what do you need to do to what teams you got to create? And once you have that, uh, uh, when you, once you give yourself permission to create a team around something that fulfills that vision, then I want you to write this down or take a picture to the screen. People support what they create. So as you bring a team around your vision, you've got to give space for them to create what that path would look like. They got to create it also with you. Otherwise, you'll just have a bunch of people resisting, right? Then you'll grow a muscle in delegating. That's a very big muscle to grow at the beginning, making that transition, delegating. And then once you delegate, guess what? They're not going to do what you said. And it's not because they're not committed. It's the nature of growing a team. They're going to be doing something else. So you're going to grow another muscle, which is called empowering people. And that's a muscle in itself. So that's, what we're gonna, that's all we're going to say about this slide. And we're going to go into the next slide, which is building a stamina to keep constant activity in the actions that create revenues for you. Now, let me say that again. Building a stamina to have constant activities. Keyword there, <laughs> there constant activities that create revenue for you. So we're gonna explain this slide a little bit more. On the slide, you see that little orange curve, that line, that orange curve, and then you see that green curve. So I'm gonna explain that a little bit. When you see that slide, right, when you see that graph, I want you to notice something, that when you start a business, you begin creating, or when you are in business, not just when you start a business, when you're in business, you create activities that create revenues for you, that creates a sale, right? And you know, if you are a normal human being, right, you do a lot of activities. Some of them, you know, you kind of throw things against the wall. This will work and that will work and this will work, right? You do a lot of things and that's what we all do at the beginning, right? Now, we're not making all that wrong. We want to become more effective, but we're not making all that wrong because what works is that you are in action. Now, at first, you create an action. Today, you create an action that will probably end up in being a result for you to create revenue. However, here's what we all know, but we forget. The actions that you take today will likely bring results for you three months from now, very likely. The actions that you get to take, that you take today will get a result for you three months from now. Not today, it's very unlikely you pick up the phone and you call a customer and they'll buy you right away. It, you gotta create this kind of relationship, right? There's certain actions that need to happen and you gotta leave certain seeds and the three months from today, then you start getting results. So as time goes by, and you keep taking actions, you keep taking actions, you keep taking actions, you keep taking actions. You forget about the actions that you take. However, you do start getting results. And that's what that graph is saying. You begin to forget on that orange line, you begin to forget what actions you take, but the green line starts growing, you start getting results. Now you stop taking actions that create revenue. At some point, once you start getting results, what usually happens, and find yourself in the conversation, right? We all do this. What usually happens is that you stop taking actions that create results, that create sales, because now you're delivering. You're delivering your product or you're delivering your service, and now you're making money, but you're no longer 
taking actions that generate results. You're no longer doing that. I mean, that generates revenue. And so you get to a point where you have some money, but because you have not been consistent in creating activities that generate revenue, you meet yourself at, a, at the beginning again, that curve meets you again, where you don't have any activities that create revenue and you no longer have money coming in. And that's the roller coaster of most entrepreneurs and of most business owners, because they go through this roller coaster of creating activities that create revenue, and then they start delivering their work and they no longer create activities. So that create revenue. So the, the lesson from this slide is that you want to begin to allow yourself to think in terms of, I've got to have a team or I've got to have a system that is selling for me every day. So like Sorel likes to do, I like to get some, some activity with you guys, some engagement here. When do you need to be selling? When do you need to be selling? What day do you need to be selling? Go ahead and say it or type it in the chat. Audrey, you've got your microphone on. Go for it. I'm not sure I understand that. What day do we need to be selling? Yeah, what um, day do you need to sell? All the time. All the time. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day, mm -hmm. day Audrey. Every day. What day do you need to be selling? Today. Every day today. Either today you're selling or your system is selling or somebody's selling. If I'm not doing that, then it will catch up with me a month or two months from today and I will have delivered my product, I will have delivered my service and I no longer have money coming in because today I stop selling something or rather say, Today, I stopped doing activities that create the possibility of revenue. Does that make sense? And, and you know, Giovanni, what's cool about this is that there's nothing wrong. You, you shouldn't beat yourself up. This is what happens. And it happens so subtly that it is a barrier to making the transition. And you want to be aware of it. So as you're making the transition or growing your business, you actually stop it before it happens. Because see, if you are wearing all the hats, the minute you get a customer or you start selling, you are a conscientious person. You're going to do whatever it takes to serve that customer well so that you can get repeat business, won't you? But given that you're wearing all the hats, you can't be serving the customer and selling at the same time, at least not effectively. So it goes back to Gio's point on the vision. It's not a vision for you to go, what am I going to do? It is, how am I structuring the team that's going to make this business run? And unless you have a team, you are doomed. You will end up repeating the cycle over and over. And that is primarily why businesses don't last beyond year one or year three. This gets really exhausting. Yeah, so, so, so great. So the, what the takeaway from this slide and from the previous slide is that you begin to allow yourself to see um, to see your business in terms of how do I create a team around either delivering with excellence and integrity my service or my products, and how do I create a team on having constant daily activities that generate revenue, right? And now all of a sudden you start creating a system that can live without you. Now that takes some time, right? There's lots of things to talk about. We're superficially talking about businesses, right? Not superficially, on a very high level. But this is the powerful seed to make that transition. Yeah. All right, very good. So 
as you're making the transition, the next few slides are slides for us to interact on so you can start to get present to the connection and the need for a team to run and grow the business. So let's say you are aware, which you are now, that, uh, and Jerry, what day do you sell? Up, oh, you're on mute. I gotta hear that. <laughs> Every day. Every day. Now, I'll tell you what, the next time I catch you not selling, you cannot tell me that you didn't know that you're supposed to be selling every day. <laughs> I knew before you asked. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna be checking on you. So now, yeah, and so I want to just wanna be a little bit rigorous also. It's about, it's not about selling, it's about every day I have to have activities that create revenue. Activities that create revenue. That, that and those activities can be around marketing your business so that you can have revenue in the future or actually closing a sale today. So you can actually have a customer who signs on the dotted line and buys something from you. So that's absolutely right. It's activities that generate revenue, whether today or tomorrow, but you're doing them every day. And now that you know that, the question I have for you is who are you selling to, right? What business are you in? Who are you selling to? In creating vision, as you saw two slides ago, there's a portion of that that involves the business you're in and the market you're serving. And without going into deep into the slide and without explaining it to you, that's not the point. I'd love to interact with one of you. No story, no details, just one word answers, okay? Or maybe a phrase. So who'd like to play the game? Okay, Mary Campbell, go ahead and go off mute. Hi. What business are you in? Uh, life coaching. Now, now that you said life coaching, I'm going to ask somebody else. Uh, Audrey, did that actually tell you how Mary could serve you? No. It didn't, right? So I'm not going to stay on this, Mary, but there is work to do to actually define the business you're in in such a way that the market you're targeting hears you. Now, if I asked you what business Kroger is in, what would you say? Uh, huh? Grocery. Groceries, right? Now, Audrey, if somebody's in the business of groceries, you know exactly what it is, right? Yes. So there is defining the business you're in to the level that the people you're targeting know exactly what to expect from you, what to get from you, and all that. We're not going to do that now. But that, my friends, will stop the transition dead in its tracks. If people don't know, and you don't know the business you're in, and you can't express it in a way that actually drives marketing and sales effectively, you are dead. So Mary, we're still going, right? Yeah, yeah we're good. Who do you sell to? I sell to uh, adults who have, um, let's see. So obviously I need to do some work on this. Um, I sell to adults who are struggling in certain areas of their life. Now, guess what? You just said you're selling to 6 billion people because that's everybody on the planet, right? <laughs> you get that? Yeah. So now the point of that is this. When you're selling to everybody, you're literally selling to nobody nobody hears you because you're not speaking to them directly. And if you're selling to everybody, it's really difficult to A, identify the real need to serve. B, 
estimate the size of the market. C, figure out who's competing against you. And last but not least, determining whether or not the people you're targeting have the ability or even the willingness to pay. So once you've made the commitment that generating activities that generate revenue for you is a daily continual thing, you actually need to be doing it in a way that's effective. And this slide is pointing to that. Defining the business you're in and defining the market you're targeting and creating the message that you would actually use to market to them. So we're gonna stop right there. Mary, thank you so much for playing this game. Let's acknowledge Mary. Thank you. Right? So now, Mary, very quickly, two, three words. What did you get from that interaction about your business? I have work to do in defining my business and defining my market. Absolutely. Now, I'm about to sell you something. Okay. That work, you will not do it by yourself. That work, you will actually get every step to do that work in Access the Leader Within. August 28th, 29th, and 30th. I want you to register when we get to that point, okay? okay. I'm, you know, I've already put the dates on my calendar. Cool. Hang in there. So now Giovanni is going to dive into, now that we're talking about generating activities to continually generate revenue, how do you do that? There are several ways. Word of mouth, the internet, social media, traditional marketing, and we're going to culminate that whole conversation with something that you'll take away that will serve you for the rest of your life. It's called the customer life cycle. So Giovanni, take it away, my friend. Let's go to word of mouth. Very good. So this is a, this is a conversation that's very familiar for most, for most of us when we're growing our business, right? It, we hear it all the time. I want to have uh, m most people when I ask them, so how, how are you growing your business? People say, well, through word of mouth. Most people would say that, right? So the, the issue with word of mouth is that you are a victim, if you will, of people sharing, right? So you have to have a lot of businesses going out there so that you can create predictable businesses through word of mouth. So what we want to do is to expedite that word of mouth. We want to create sufficient activity out there, sufficient people talking about you out there so that you can grow your business. Word of mouth, it's where you want to go, but it is not the strategy to scale your business or to, your, or to grow your business at a particular pace. Does that make sense? Raise your hand if that makes sense. Now, it is critical that this is a conversation that it's easy for the brain to dismiss, but we have it here because in my experience, I've noticed people have grown their business and you want to allow yourself to be in that conversation. People grow the businesses from zero to seven figures in a short period of time, and then they will be out of business in a very short, in a very quick period of time because they did not have integrity in the promises that they deliver to their clients and the promises that they deliver to their team. So integrity, think, see, think of integrity as your promises, the promises that you give people on when you're gonna deliver something or the expectations that you create with your team. If one, if you don't allow yourself, if one doesn't allow oneself to create strong structures that are glued together by integrity, then for the most part people run into putting out fires all the time. And when they put out fires all the time, then it's likely you're gonna drop the ball somewhere. Now, we like to say here that a good experience will be shared by one person. Maybe you have a good experience when you go somewhere, you share it with one people. But if you have a bad experience when you do business with someone, that person will share it with 10 people. So you could see how critical it is to have, make sure that you always have integrity with your promises. And then the other one is, if you wow someone, if you just, you just over the top, you over the liver, it is likely that they're gonna maybe share that with two people. <laughs> so people are not like overwhelming me, just like looking to share about your business because you wow them. 
No, they're more likely looking to share about your business when you did not deliver something that you said you were going to do. I mean, you could see it for yourself when you have a bad experience, right? So this is a critical slide that we wanted to make sure that is inside of this conversation. Now, one thing that we want to add to give you some tools, to give you some tips to growing your business from this conversation is that I want you to, I want you to know that I know that you know how to create revenues for your business. There are a lot of things that you do on a daily basis or during the week that create revenue. But a lot of them, if not 80% of them, do not create revenue. They just, you're just taking a lot of activities that don't create revenue, right? Raise your hand if you can see that for yourself. You do a lot of things, right? You do a lot, but they don't create revenue. So given that you do know how to create revenue, that there's that 20% of activities, Hey, Jill. Yeah. Th this is such an important point that, uh, you know, uh, just indulge me for a moment. Let's take a moment to have that sink in, okay? Now, Gio said, how many of you can observe for yourself that over 80% of the activities you undertake on a daily basis aren't designed to generate revenue for your company? Now, I want you to pause on that. This is no joke. That's a serious barrier to making the transition. So now, and I don't want it to just land on you as if something were accusing you of doing. I'd love for you to pause and raise your hand and say, yeah, I really get that. Not get it conceptually, but you're actually seeing that, oh my God, 80% of my time. So who's in that boat? Raise your hand. Yeah, that's the way it is. So now, whether, you know, regardless of what you do beyond this conversation, the one thing you want to do is sit down with your schedule and schedule what I call green time. Green is for money. You want money, right? Schedule green time on your schedule. And you want to make sure that at least 50% of your activities are green. And as Gio would say, if you can't do it by yourself, put a system in place, get yourself some help, get the assistance you need, get a partner, whatever you do, 50% of your activities are green. You're talking to someone on the phone, you're sending an email, whatever it is. Yeah. Gio, and, and, I'm really passionate about that one. <laughs> I got that, Cyril. Thank you for your passion. And, and what I wanted to add, to the uh, to the passion is that you already know what those activities are that that's what i wanted to underline you already know what are the activities that create revenue for you you know them right and it's not all of these things that i do every day there's three and so if i do know them i want to make sure like sorrel is pointing to that i create an occasion in my calendar to double down on those three activities to do 10% more, to do 20% more, to do 30% more of those activities that I know that can create revenues for me. And you can see it in your life, right? There is a moment when you look at your savings account or your checking account and then you see it and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going in red. And then all of a sudden you're like, ah, 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 I'm no longer doing all of those 80 activities. I'm only going to be generating these three activities because they know, I know they create revenues for me. So the opportunity of this slide is to allow yourself to have those three activities on your daily activity. Can you double down on those? Very good. Now, we're gonna have a 30,000 view on, uh, on a conversation on marketing, on differentiating the traditional marketing through social media marketing. Now, we wanted to talk, to talk to you a little bit about social media because this is a, this is a this is an aspect of marketing that now pretty much governs business. If you're not on social media, if you don't have a presence on social media, you're missing a huge opportunity. There is, uh, I forgot, 2 billion people on Facebook. I forgot the numbers of how many people are trafficking through social media. And you have access to them. Now, 
there is a certain science and there's certain art to make sure that you're attracting your target market, like Sorel was pointing to early, the people that are interested in doing business with you. Not everybody's interested, right? They're not in that walkway. They're not in that journey. For example, if you're a realtor, right? How, which people are interested in doing business with you? More than likely, a couple who's getting married is looking for a house, right? And it's a particular age. It's not the 20s. You know, there are some people in their early 20s, but that's not the majority. You know, somewhere between 28 and 40, people are getting married. They're looking for a house, right? And like Sorel likes to say, well, they're not the only ones who could be interested in buying houses. There is also the people who do state planning because they're in that conversation of state planning who's going to die. So they're going to sell their house, right? So there's a target market and on social media, you can target the people who are in the journey of being in business with you. Now, when I used to sell newspapers at traffic lights, this was, this makes a lot of sense. There is a lot of traffic. When you look at the slide, there's a lot of traffic on social media, but only certain billboards make call your attention. What that means is only certain ads call your attention. So when you see an ad calling your attention, I want you to pay attention on why. Why? What, was, what did they say? What was the hook? What did they tell you that called your attention that had you click in? Now, when you click on an ad, when you click on something, at that moment, that company is starting a relationship with you. I want you to see your business also that way, that when you put an ad, right, and you create this billboard on social media and you have this headline and the headline, depending on your business, will say something else, right? You know, for Mary Campbell, it would say, how do you make a business, how do you make a transition after 50? A business, a business, I don't know, I'm making that up, Mary, right? I don't know how you, which one is your target, right? But it will be specific to the target. So that person will click on that ad, and at that moment, this life cycle begins. You see these nine stages? If you can, take a picture of that, take a picture of this line, because you want to get really close to those stages to win the game of business. There are, trip, there are people trafficking around on social media or wherever they are, and you want to target them. You want to target the specific one. Then you want to create a headline or a story that attracts their interest, right? You want to ask them for their email, okay? You want to do that. Now, with social media, if we want to get a little bit more, more complicated, then you know you can put a pixel on when they click on something. But never mind that, let's keep it simple. You wanna ask them for their email because you wanna start a relationship with them. So how do you start a relationship with someone? Not by selling them something, but by educating them. If I just go around selling people something, I likely will begin to just repel people left and right because nobody wants to be sold but people like to be educated. So in your target, in your target market, there are things that you do that you're constantly solving a problem to your target market. And those things that you, those problems that you solve, you will educate people on those constantly. That's what the, that's where the world content comes. You create content specific to your target market that's educating them. So if I am in your target and then I see content on social media about it, for example, if I'm in the market of buying a house, right? And then you'll say the best five places to buy a house in Atlanta and why? Then all of a sudden I feel educated. Like, oh, I want to know why. And then you'll tell me about schools and you tell me about crime and you tell me about all these things. It's like, oh, okay. Right? Or the best investments done in the last year in Atlanta. Then also, oh, I want to know about the best investments. I'm in that market, so I'm being educated. So you want to see, you know, 
you want to see well how could i educate my target mind right that delivers that education that delivers that relationship big word here relationship as you develop the relationship then you make an offer when you make an offer then you will close them but then you just let them go you let people go and never see them again no you have their email you're not going to go sell them right away you're going to continue developing that relationship by sending them information that educates them about the product that you do and keeps on top of their mind so that's why you get an email from someone who you did business with six months ago and they say hey just want to check in with you and i'll tell you the time patterns that help people on whatever right and then if you're interested in that, you'll read it and all of a sudden you're like, oh, that was useful. You were not sold on anything, but now you're on top of mind. Because you're doing this with a significant number of people, now you start getting referrals. And at some point you can make another offer to that same customer because customers will continue buying from you. Customers will not stop buying from you either until they die or you upset them right so they will they're going to continue buying from you so that's the customer life cycle anything else you want to add sorel about that slide was that useful raise your hand if that was useful yeah powerful <laughs> powerful slide right awesome awesome and giovanni i think this slides puts us in a place right now where we can demonstrate what we're saying Nothing happens for your business until you sell something, until you market something. So what you've witnessed today, and you've gotten value, right? Raise your hand if you've gotten value. Wherever you go, whatever you do next, you've gotten value. Now, for Mindful Performance Blueprint, for ExecuFit, for my partnership with Giovanni, we're demonstrating what we're saying. This conversation was a form of marketing. We're actually marketing to a target market. And that target market is entrepreneurs who are looking to grow their businesses. And they fit in a range where they are looking to grow beyond seven figures and they're not there yet. So Mary, you get, you get how defined that target market is? Mary? Yeah. 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 So you okay. get that, right? So uh, now, would you say you fit in that market? Yeah, I, um, I was double checking to make sure that my, uh, my calendar had the dates on it. <laughs> yeah, you fit in that market, right? You get that? Yeah. So we're demonstrating that we're marketing to you. Absolutely. That we've marketed to you what Giovanni is saying. We're not just marketing to you and coming here saying, I've got newspapers. You want it? I've got newspapers. You want it? No. We actually created something that had value to you. Now, whether you buy from us or not, you're walking away remembering that you had value. And Giovanni and I are walking away saying, you know what? We did our job. We stuck right. to our word we delivered value because that's what we're committed to regardless and after delivering value you now make an offer and the offer we're making i'm typing it into the chat right now and i just posted it on facebook the offer is for you to join giovanni myself and all the other participants register <laughs> and invite a whole bunch of people to come with you to an entrepreneur's leadership retreat on August 28th, 29th, and 30th. The cost is $97 plus a credit card processing fee that Eventbrite will charge you. That is all you need to do to be in the course. And we'd love you to be in it. And if you've gotten value out of an hour how many of you think you're gonna get a lot of value out of three days? Raise your hand. Now, how many of you say you'd love to receive that value? 
Mm-hmm. All right. Now, the ball's in your court. And Giovanni, we've got four minutes. I think it'll make sense right now for you to share the Access the Leader Within webpage. So we're going to show you the webpage. And if you said, yes, I want to receive that value and I want to be in the course, go ahead and follow Giovanni's lead. You're on your computer. Go ahead, launch your browser. Put www dot access the leader within dot com in the place where you would put the URL and go to the site and register now. And Giovanni and I are going to step you right through that. So there is the site. Now that's a landing page. When you market your business, I'm recommending that you, whether you go to the course or not, steal everything that Giovanni and I are demonstrating. You need a landing page like that to continually market your business. So now what you would do to register is you would click on join the elite leaders of the future. Click on that and it takes you straight to the page where you actually register on Eventbrite. On Eventbrite, you click on tickets and all of you are familiar with this. You select the number of tickets. I recommend you put the number 10 in there. And then you pay and you're done. Now, the reason I said 10 is I want to go back to what Giovanni said on the vision slide. You are not going to make this transition by yourself. So even in creating this opportunity, I recommend you create a team around you and actually have your team be there with you. So that, remember Giovanni said, People actually do what they create. You want your team members to be creating this with you. What you're going to be getting out of these three days is a new set of language. It is the language of the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur who is, who is effective at leading himself or herself so that he or she can lead others. And it's not leading as in giving orders or being authoritative. It's the kind of leading where what you're creating is what they're creating. And uh, that's the three days. So now, everything I've just said from when Geo stopped was part of this workshop a demonstration of how you target your customers, market to them, make an offer, and invite them to accept the offer. So how many of you are accepting our offer? Mary is accepting the offer. Samantha is accepting the offer. Who else? Now there's something that happens, right? I want to demonstrate something else. Now that I ask who's accepting the offer, the first thing that happened in your brain is, oh my God, he, he's, he's kidding me. Did he actually just ask who's accepting the offer? <laughs> and many of you may consider that in the brain that says salespeople are annoying and slimy, Many of you may say, gosh, you didn't just do that. I'm demonstrating what it takes to have your business grow. You have to ask and you have to check in and see who's accepting. So now two things happen. Samantha said yes. Mary said yes. Guess what? Giovanni and I are going to follow up with you. 
to support you in completing your registration if you haven't done it yet. And given that Samantha's not crazy and Mary's not crazy, it actually now planted a seed in Audrey's mind and in Peter's mind and in Eddie's mind and Karich's mind to say, oh, well, gosh, you know, if Samantha's going to do it and she's not crazy, maybe I should do it too. You want to take advantage of that when you're marketing, when you're offering. And uh, that's the game you get to play. And you know what? You can make that game fun. You can play that game all out. Giovanni, are you ready to play, my friend? Completely. Thank you, everybody, right. for being here. Thank you so much for Sorrel. Thank you for your just unapologetic coach that you are that left us with the, the spirit and with the being that it takes to grow a business. Thank you all for being here. Mary Campbell, Samantha, we'll look forward to see you in the course. And for the rest of you, there is no better time than now to register and we'll see you at the end of August. Thank you all. Have a phenomenal day. And Giovanni and I can stay here for a few more minutes. If you have any questions you want answered, anything like that, I'm available. Giovanni's available. Eddie, thank you for being here. Audrey, thank you for being here. Reach. Hey, I have to, I have to take it. I have to take your word, man. That is on my lunch time. You see, I'm sitting on the car, man. <laughs> Eddie, are you, are you putting yourself in the course? Yeah, I'm trying because I got some issue, but I might not be around. That's what I'm going to have to find out first. Okay, no problem. Okay. All right, man. Thank you for the thank you. That was very good. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, now I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> We're available. Giovanni and I will be the